Go get him a travel book. They're always going someplace. Or an art book. They like art. What do you think? I think you don't have to get your ex-in-law's belated Christmas presents. That's what I think. Uh, belated New Year's presents. I'm pretty sure Miss Manners would back me up on this. Well, I'm divorcing Michael, not them. They're still Lauren's grandparents. Besides, they're crazy about me. Still? Yeah. Well, they know what Michael is like. They probably blame him. <laughs> this has been confirmed? I know them, Vincent. Okay, come on, help me. You're gonna pick up Lauren, and I want to get them something that says, you know... Love me even though I dumped your son like a sack of cats. I didn't dump him, but yeah, yeah, something like that. Oh! What? Oh, my God. What? What? Oh, my God. What? Time of Luck and Kindness by Vincent Gray! Shh. Oh, my God, Shh. Vincent, you're in the stores. Just, Why didn't you tell anybody? I didn't know. What do you mean? I, mean, I knew that it was coming out sometime this month, but I thought that I would, that I would get a warning. <gasps> How cool is this? Just keep, keep your voice <laughs> Why? Why? It's so exciting. It's my brother's book. It's, it's, it's my brother's book. It's my baby brother, Vincent Gray. He's a published author. Wait, she's out on a day pass. You're going to tell me this is not exciting? Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Where are you going? Outside the vomit. I'm of luck and kindness. I'm of luck and kindness. Right here. It's a great. Oh, check it out. When my client found out that her ex-husband had applied for passports in their children's names and discovered a credit card receipt for three one-way air tickets to Tübingen with an open departure date, she naturally became concerned that he planned to abduct the children. Your Honor, there is no foundation for believing that my client planned or plans to abduct his own children. He planned to take the children on a visit to their grandparents in Germany after obtaining his ex-wife's consent. Ms. Benedict, did you have prior knowledge of these plans? No, Your Honor. Not at all. I happened to discover his plans on my own. You searched his coat pockets. Okay, well, shall we set that aside for a moment? Mr. Gelman, are you prepared to offer an explanation for your client's behavior? And w where is Mr. Heckling, by the way? Well, he's en route, Your Honor. Um, as I understand it, my client obtained the airline tickets after seeing them offered at a deep discount on a travel website. And why would he do that if he hadn't talked to his former wife? His mother is ill, Your Honor. He wanted to be prepared in the sudden worsening... His mother is as healthy as a horse, Your Honor. She's too mean to die. I hate to say this, Your Honor, but I think what we're dealing with here is a plaintiff who's nothing more or less than a common bigot. Objection. An individual whose unreasoned hatred for an ethnic group, an entire people, in this case the German people, has utterly eclipsed such reason as she might ordinarily possess. That is completely untrue. Mr. Gelman, on, on what basis do you accuse Ms. Benedict of these anti... German feelings. During the course of their marriage, Your Honor, the plaintiff habitually remarked, as my client Gunther Heckling fastened his shoelaces, that he, quote, tied his shoes in little Nazis. That was a joke. A, a joke. Sorry. Well, I don't really see what this has to do okay. with Okay. He's a Nazi. He is. Miss Benedict. No, he used to be a normal person, but something happened. I, I mean, the guy hosts his own Lenny Riefenstahl film festival every year. He has a big brass eagle on his belt, for God's sake. I put it to you that you are a common crowd hater. Oh, that's ridiculous. Objection. Your bigotry is at the root of this. All right, everybody, attack. that's enough. This is a custody hearing. It's not an open forum on cultural prejudice. Mr. Gellman, it would be helpful if we could hear your client's voice in this matter. I spoke to him less than an hour ago, Your Honor. He said he might be a little late. Oh, my God. He's never late. He's German. Your Honor. That stinking Nazi creep. Your Honor. Miss Benedict, your comments are undermining your credibility. That damn goose-stepping, square-headed hun bastard. He's taken my baby. I recommend issuing a warrant for Mr. Heckling's arrest. For what? Missing a court date? He's not even legally obligated to be here. Still, Mr. Gellman, the sooner you produce your client, the better. That won't be a problem, Your Honor. Good. We're in recess until then. Excuse me. I'm Maxine Gray from DCF, and I need to see Aisha Al-Jamal. 
right down the hall. Mrs. Mrs. Al Jamal, I have to examine your daughter. If I don't look at these wounds, they could get infected. I have to look at her. Excuse me, doctor. I'm I'm from DCF. Great. You speak Yemeni? No. Yeah, Why do I have to speak to someone else? I've already seen the police. I'm a social services. We deal with situations involving children. I am not a child. I'm 15. Can, can everybody leave? You're upsetting my mother. Uh, she hasn't stopped wailing since I came in here. The, the father tried to punch me. Doctor. I'm trying to do my job. Why don't you give me a minute with a girl and maybe we can get everybody to calm down. Fine with me. Okay. Please, it's okay. Uh, why don't we start with names? I'm Maxine. This is my sister Kaja and my mother Amina. She doesn't speak much English, but she understands some. Mrs. Al Jamal, Mrs. Al Jamal, I'm Mrs. Gray, and I'm here to help your daughter. You understand? To help. All right. Thank you. Um, Aisha, can you tell me what happened? It was stupid. I had a bad week at school. Some people had been teasing me. I should be used to that. Everyone thinks I'm different. I was frustrated. I don't know, I just, just tried to hurt myself. Now, the report says that you have stab wounds in your chest and arm. You're telling me you did this to yourself? Yes. Aisha, if someone did this to you, I really need to know. No one did it. I did it to myself. Please, wait. Yes? My father would probably not approve of me speaking to you, but I need to know what you're going to do. Your sister Aisha is a juvenile. Unless I'm satisfied that she won't be attacked again, and she was attacked, I'll apply for an order of temporary custody so that she can be protected. If it were true what you say, she's in no danger. Not now. It has been proven she's a virgin. You're going to have to be clearer than that. Somehow, word got around the Yemeni community she had been with a man, that she was no longer a virgin. She was examined this morning by clerical authorities. She is a virgin. She has a signed certificate. Are you saying that your sister was attacked by someone who thought that she was no longer a virgin? No. But when Aisha heard the rumor, she believed she had destroyed our good name, our family honor. She must have become hysterical, as she says. And in this state, she did violence upon herself. Needlessly. I intend to talk with your parents. I'm sure they'll help clear things up. It is best for you to leave us all alone. I'm afraid I can't do that. Judge Gray. What's this? The complaint against Judge Alistair McNeil, the Judicial Conduct Commission just called. I wanted the judge's sad triple bypass this morning. You're the fill in alternate. You're kidding. When do we meet? Tonight. Testimony from the complainant is set for the second floor conference room, 8 p.m. Dresses business, cocktails, and dancing after. Judge McNeil, huh? Mr. Alistair McNeil is one of the few judges sitting in this jurisdiction capable of original thought. Doesn't seem like the kind of guy to make sexual overtures to a one of the skid streetwalker in his chambers. When Judge McNeil arrived, there was talk of an incident in his previous assignment. The complaint was investigated, found to have no merit. Judge was clear, and the proceedings were sealed. But as a member of the Judicial Conduct Commission, I'll have access to that material. Sealed or not, right? You'll find the transcript of the inquiry in there. Some light after dinner reading. Great. Fun never stops. I love the cover. What is it exactly? It's an uh, abstract. Can't believe your book just shows up like that. Where's the fanfare? That's the way it is with fiction. They only promote the big books. Oh, you should send it to Oprah. <laughs> Seriously, Vincent. People listen to her. It's a small book by a guy nobody's ever heard of. That's the way it works. You hope for good reviews, word of mouth. Title's confusing. What does it mean? It's a, from a poem by a guy named Rumi. Yeah, but what does it mean? It's about 
moral relativism. Huh. That sounds good. Hey, what's up? I'm getting a lesson in literature from Herman Melville. Isn't it great? Nothing like the swell of familial pride. He's an insurance salesman, Benson. Do you understand his work? He didn't even want to touch it. He's proud in his own way. Besides, you enjoy being misunderstood. Oh, right. I'll remember that when the review store come out. When does that happen? New York Times is any day now. Really? But we're not telling anybody in case it's not good. It's gonna be good. It could really not be. You know, I could be humiliated in the best paper in the country, in the world. Oh, my God. Why the hell would I want to do this? Hey, enjoy it. It's really happening. Uh, yeah. <sighs> yes, it is. You want her to move in here? Just for a while. She lost her job with the chiropractor because of her carpal tunnel syndrome. And, and we'd give her our guest room, but we're remodeling for the baby right now, and the dust is really bad for Evie's allergies. Peter, honey, you know I've been supportive of your adopting this young woman's baby. However, I'm not sure it's the best idea for her to move in here. It's only temporary, just if the drywall's up. We'd rent her an apartment, Maxine, but all of her money is tied up in the remodeling and adoption fees. Doesn't she have a family? People who care about her. Her family lives in Massachusetts. They're estranged. We're all she has right now, and she's carrying our baby. Your grandchild. Yeah, this was the day I was scheduled to appear on the soliciting charge. Judge McNeil approached me in the corridor and asked me to come with him to his chambers. I remember there was a very bright red carpet with uh, a blue stripe around the outside and uh, a picture of the judge on his desk in a ski outfit and also a big gold mirror with an eagle on it by the door. By stipulation, both parties have agreed it is an accurate description of the judge's chambers. That's correct. Ms. Herrick, would you tell the members of the Judicial Conduct Commission what happened next? He asked me to remove my clothes and kneel and perform oral sex on him. And when I wouldn't, he got nuts. That is, he said I'd regret it. That afternoon, he gave me two months in jail instead of the usual fine you get, you know? There were no witnesses who saw the two of you together at any time? He was very careful. I realized that later. Snaky, you know? I think you'll like this room. It's my favorite room in the house. It gets afternoon sun. Okay. And it's got its own bathroom. So you'll have plenty of privacy. And, um, Mom's a wonderful cook. When I'm not waxing the floors. <laughs> I hope you like cable TV. Cool. Okay. Okay. Sweetie. Maxine, thank you. I, I know this isn't easy, but it's just for a little while. She doesn't have much to say. But she's a little shy. Can I get another pillow for my bed? Oh, and my own key? Of course. Lauren? Oh. The Pre-Raphaelites. Yeah, I remembered how much you liked them. Yes, we love them. It's a very thoughtful gift. Yeah, it's, it's got Ophelia and, um, and, and Chatterton. Oh, all the greatest hits. <laughs> Thank you. Really? Well, Lauren should be down in a minute. I think, uh, I think Mom's just helping her pick out a sweater. Is the coffee okay? Yes. Fine. Thank you. Well, I'm glad we finally got a chance to see each other face to face. Um, I've been wanting to talk to you to explain what happened. Amy, you really don't have to do that. No, I want to. Look, you're both adults, and it's none of our business. Naturally, we felt pretty sad, but you don't owe us an explanation. Well, I will always respect Michael, and, and, and I would never let our differences interfere with our parenting, ever. Does Lauren like Chinese food? Well, Karen thought it would be nice to try it at lunch. 
She, sure, yeah, yeah, she'll, she'll try just about anything. She's she's pretty adventurous for, for a child her age. Anyway, I, I must have tried to write you at least a dozen times, but um, each time it just seemed so self-serving and artificial and... What can't be mended must be born. Isn't it endured? Is it? Yes, I think what can't be mended must be endured. Well, what, what, what I'm trying to trying to get at is... It's like the iceberg thing. There's, um, there's only a little part of it that's above the surface. But, but that's the part that everybody sees. And I... Pretty uh, Pops! Oh, oh, hi, sweetheart. Oh, sweetie mm. pie. <gasps> Don't you look pretty? Did we give you this dress for your birthday? Yeah, Grandma said I should wear it. Uh, Hello, Maxine. Uh, how are you? We're good, thank you. And you? Very well. Good. Hey, Lauren, uh, Grimmy and Pops are going to take you out for Chinese food. Okay, but I have to get to the Amazon habitat by 8. That's when all the nocturnal animals start to go to bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> then we better get going. All right, I'll walk you out. No, no, no. That's all right. No need. We'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow evening after dinner. Bye-bye. I never liked them. Mother, well, I didn't. Oh, Maxine, good. You're here. Just in time to talk to Mr. and Mrs. Ishtar. Susie, that's not cute. I'm sorry. I'm not a fan of the culture. Something about women being forced to wear garbage sacks makes me cranky. Well, what are they doing here? Police brought them in. They suspect they stabbed their daughter, don't you? I don't know what I think. I was planning to go to their house and talk to them like I would anyone else. They're not a flight risk. They're nomads. They wander. They're Yemeni, not nomads. Maxine, do you have any idea how they treat their women? Look at his wife. She's covered from head to toe. Well, I'm here to help their daughter, not analyze their way of life. No good luck getting anything out of them. I'm already looking for a placement. I'm sure you are. Your Honor, we've been unable to locate my client's former husband or her children. According to school authorities, they were removed yesterday by Gunter Heckling on pretext of an automobile accident involving his ex-wife. Judge Gray? Have you informed the police and the state's attorney's office of this, Mr. Tyson? Yes, Your Honor. It's my understanding that no action will be initiated until the children have been missing at least 48 hours. Judge Gray. Uh, in, in a minute, Donna. And no one's heard from them since. Judge Gray. What is it? Donna? I'm sorry. But, but uh, Hartford Police Captain named Fritz Teeter just phoned. Uh, he said they just received a call from Gunter Heckling. Uh, the children were with him, and they're fine. What? Where are they? Well, uh, Captain Teeter wasn't sure, but he, he said it sounded like an airport terminal. He heard German being spoken in the background. Oh, my God. I knew it. Your Honor, I assure you, I had no idea. Well, this court finds Gunter Heckling in violation of the current custody agreement. Uh, in addition, I'm directing the state's attorney's office to issue a complaint accusing Mr. Heckling of kidnapping. Oh, Miss Benedict, I promise you that I and the state of Connecticut will do everything in our power to work with the German authorities to seek extradition of your ex-husband and the safe return of your children. Thank you, officer. Mr. and Mrs. Al-Jamal, I'm Maxine Gray. I'm very sorry for all this. We have been here for over an hour. I have a business. We have children at home. Truly, I apologize. They refused to release my daughter from the hospital. That is correct. DCF has the authority to keep her there pending an investigation. That is, until we know what happened to her. Aisha told you what happened. DCF is not satisfied with this report. DCF? What does that stand for? I apologize. It means the Department of Children and Families. You have a department to take care of your children and families? You cannot take care of them yourself? In my country, this would be unthinkable, having strangers interfere with a family. Well, we do things differently here. Yes. I read the newspapers. Women leave their babies in trash cans. Children murder their parents. Forgive me if I do not think you do things better. I'm having some problems with Aisha's story, Mrs. Al-Jamal. Please address your comments to me. It's customary for me to speak with the child's mother. Your custom, not mine. I speak for the family. Then do you think your daughter stabbed herself? I believe what Aisha said. Well, I'm having some problems with it. Are we under arrest? No, of course not. Then I would like to leave. Yalla, bitna baro. Mr. Al Jamal, you can't avoid talking with DCF. You're welcome to be a guest in my home. Yalla. Then we'll talk there. 
this afternoon. Ms. Dewsbeeper, you testified that you saw a woman leaving my client's chambers who you believe was Ms. Herrick. Yes. But your view was essentially from behind. You saw a red-haired woman of medium stature leaving the judge's chambers. Can you be sure it was Ms. Herrick? Well, pretty sure. It was the same kind of dyed red hair. Isn't it fair to say that at best you have a hunch that the person leaving the judge's chambers was Andy Herrick? Well, yes, a hunch. A pretty good hunch. Thank you, Miss Deucebeaver. No more questions. All right, let's take a ten-minute recess. Rick Bachman. Amy Gray. Welcome to the Judicial Conduct Commission. Is it all you thought it'd be? Yeah, all that and more. Actually, I'm a little overwhelmed. The stakes are so high for Judge McNeil. What I want to know is what the hell we're all doing here anyway. We all know McNeil's a pansy. Hey, do you really believe that he asked this bimbo to give him a, a helmet scrub? Do we know he's gay? Well, the previous incident in New Haven certainly suggests he is. But he was exonerated in that case. Yes, but if he is a homosexual, it explains why he was such a perfect target for that kind of sleazy accusation. Excuse me, if this man is gay, what's the point of this whole exercise? In my book, homosexuals don't seek oral gratification from female prostitutes. Yeah, especially that one. I mean, did, did you see the uh, way Are we, are we deliberating here? Because it's my understanding that, that we shouldn't deliberate until all the evidence is in. Isn't that what we tell jurors? We haven't even heard from Judge McNeil yet. Well, I, I, I just think the whole thing's a crock. Uh, I, I, I've got to go tap my kidneys. Damn. Looks like you're out of the golf game. I'll live. Mrs. Gray, it is strict Yemeni tradition that an unmarried woman of decent family does not have relations with a man, not before marriage. Things were not so different here at one time. No, it's far more important in my culture. The girl may never marry. Her sister may not marry. The whole family becomes a figure of ridicule. The only way to erase the shame is if the girl is punished with death. And this is your belief? At one time, if the daughter of another broke this law, I would have lost respect for the family. But when I saw Aisha injured, I knew no strain on my family honor is worth the life of a child. Still, I did this to her. You're saying you attacked your daughter? No, but I passed on these beliefs to my children. Aisha hurt herself to protect her family. Bid that chime in Fadlik. Thank you, Mrs. Al-Jamal. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? She does not understand English. Oh, I think she gets the gist. Mrs. Gray. Women do not participate in this manner. It would make her uncomfortable. Mr. Al-Jamal, I have complied with your rules. I have respected your customs. I think you owe me the same consideration. I want to talk to the child's mother. Amina. I am a mother, like you. I know that you're very worried about your daughter. I know you want her to come home, but she will not come home until I know what happened. Is that clear? Aisha will not come home until I know the truth. Mrs. Gray, you have said enough. Yes. Yes, I think I have. Oh, hi. Oh, hey, Evie. Do you know if that TV in my bedroom has a remote control? No. No, I think it's the old-fashioned kind. You actually have to get up and turn that knob. Is that my shirt you're wearing? Oh, is it? 
I found it in my bedroom closet. I figured nobody wanted it anymore, so... Uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I just use that as sort of an overflow closet. But if you want to wear it, go ahead. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Some of my clothes are getting a little tight. When are you due again? May 21st. Hello. Hi, Mom. Hello, Evie. How are you? Freezing. <laughs> There's something wrong with your heat. Like you don't have any. I'll show you how to work the thermostat. Thanks. Is that your shirt? Hi, Donna. It's Vincent home yet? Lisa, thank what God you're here. What's wrong? The review's out. He's reading it. The New York Times? Is it good? He won't say anything. He just keeps reading it over and over and over. Hi. Is that your review? Yeah, I got an advanced copy. Well, is it good? It's good. How good? Really good. Oh, thank God. Vincent, that's fantastic. Let me see. Wow. Auspicious debut. <laughs> Original voice. Nuanced and convincing. Nuanced is good. Nuanced is great. Then why are you kind of green? There was another review today in The Spectator. What's that? A small magazine. Very literary. British and snotty. I've never heard of it. What did they say? They said I wrote my second book first. Oh, the bastards! What does that mean? Not good. What did they say exactly? Exactly? Uh, let's see. Uh, surfeite of intelligence, a deficit of courage. It's careful, and it's calculated. Mr. Gray is afraid of losing a reputation he has yet to earn. He seems to think that even when you've got nothing, you've got something to lose. Not that I've memorized it or anything. Come on, Vincent. This is the New York Times. I mean, who's ever heard of that, that other thing? The Spectator. See, I've already forgotten. The problem is, they're right. No, they're not. Come on, this is your moment. Can't you just let yourself have it? Excuse me. Can I say something? You wrote something, Vincent. Putting your ideas and dreams into words and out there for everyone. That's an act of courage. Sitting around finding fault with other people's work is cowardly. You know what they say. It's easier to criticize than create. <laughs> Besides, if Englishmen had any sense of aesthetics, they'd be circumcised. This is a serious charge, Judge, with serious consequences. If the allegation is proven, you could be suspended or removed from office. This is your opportunity to be heard. At this time, with all due respect, members of the Commission, my client has advised me that he will make no statement nor present any evidence on his behalf. For God's sakes, Alistair, defend yourself. Your lack of comment is a statement in itself, Judge McNeil. Uh, Mr. Cochran, as I know you're aware, during the course of the investigation of the case, this commission had an occasion to review the record of, of the New Haven incident. And perhaps it would be helpful if Judge McNeil addressed himself to that. Against my advice, my client wishes to say something. After 30 years of service, I'm distressed to discover my integrity can be so easily impugned. This case is a simple matter of my word versus the complainant. And I will not inject information that is not relevant into this hearing. At this point, I feel compelled to offer my resignation as Superior Court Judge of the State of Connecticut. This should relieve the commission of its onerous burden. If you'll excuse me. Oh, let me guess. Got a 
Battery remote. Peter, you've given that young woman a home, a credit card, the shirt from your sister's back. She does not need a remote control Shh. to have... to have a healthy baby. Evie has sciatica. She has to stay off her feet as much as possible. Hey, take a look. Vincent's review. Oh, hi, Peter. I was just about to call you. Uh, Julian said I could borrow her car if I needed it. Sure. Where are you off to? Driving. Errands and stuff. It's kind of private, okay? I shouldn't have to get the third degree every time I want to go someplace. You're right. I'm really sorry. Um, I'll get Julian to um, bring the car over after lunch. I was kind of hoping I could have it now. Okay. Um, let me call her at work. Oh, please. Mother? Peter, you don't have to give her your car. If she wants to go somewhere, she can walk to the bus stop and take the bus. Evie has sciatica. I can't believe you're allowing this young woman to manipulate you like this. It's fine, really. Hey, Mom, it's 8.30. We're going to be late. Julian said it was okay. Well, I appreciate your willingness to, to give up your baby to my son and daughter-in-law, Evie. I won't have you take advantage of them. Mother, please. Do you honestly believe she'll hand over her baby to someone else if you don't accede to her every whim? She's got a very good deal here. Don't you, Evie? Hey, Mom. No, yeah. Evie knows that she's damn lucky to have you and Jillian to have her baby raised in a home where it will always be loved, taken care of, safe. Evie may be young, but she's no fool. Why would she jeopardize having that for her baby? You people don't know me. You don't know anything about me. It's my baby, and I will do whatever I want with it, and you can't stop me. Somebody needed to say something. Yeah? What made you think it had to be you? It's my house, my son. Why shouldn't I? Because Peter asked you not to. Well, don't they have any self-respect? Can't they see what that little girl is doing to them? Ma, you don't know everything. We don't know everything. We, we don't know what it's like not to be able to have a baby. So if Peter and Jillian want, want, want to let that young woman walk all over them for the privilege of adopting her baby, then, then I plan to be supportive. And I think you should, too. I hear Aisha Al-Jamal is still in the hospital? Yes. I found a placement. Susie, no! I'm working on an investigation! That man stabbed his daughter. Well, you don't know you that! having sex with somebody. Well, actually, she didn't have sex. Well, that makes it better. Do you honestly expect every family we work with to walk and talk and look like us? We're here to help people, not convert no. them. Dealing with diversity is part of the job. It's Maxine. part of being on the planet, in fact. Maxine, you're a certified member of the morality police, but you're defending people who murder women for losing their virginity? Susie, I'm not defending anyone. I'm just trying to help a disturbed child and her parents, as I do every day. Do you know how naive that sounds? These people don't share our values. They don't They don't answer to the same authority. The mother wants her daughter home. That's in oh. a universal language. As if what the mother wants counts for anything. Don't underestimate the power of the matriarch where her child's interest is concerned. Maxine, I'll give you one more day on this. Then I'm taking over. Thank you, Susie. I know how much a woman's authority means to you. Judge McNeil. Judge Gray. May I have a few moments of your time? Please, I don't have many moments left in this office. I'd be delighted to spend the last few with you. My chamber is pretty much as described by the complainant, isn't it? <laughs> or as described to her. Why are you here, Judge Gray? I want to know why you refuse to defend yourself. Maybe I don't have a right to know, but I want to know. The question's compound, calls for a conclusion. I should make you rephrase, but what the hell? Sit down. And I won't proposition you since you don't have any business pending before my court. So, Judge Gray, how would you have defended my case? Well, Judge McNeil, we all know what happened in New Haven. I read the transcripts of the allegations against you. You were accused of sexual impropriety then. You fought it. And you won. Having read the transcript, may I guess at your defense? 
Ladies and gentlemen of the Judicial Conduct Commission, I put it to you that Judge Alistair McNeil cannot be guilty as charged. He is, as evidenced by this prior unfounded allegation, a bona fide queer, as the term is commonly used and understood. Judge, I am not suggesting any particular defense. I, I am asking you why you had none. You know, I was accused of groping a Marine in a bus terminal men's room. I am gay. I was angry. And at the time, I thought it was as important to prove to the people who backed my appointment that they were not wrong, that I was not morally unfit to uphold my office. And when I was exonerated, I vowed I would never go through anything like that again. I have been an excellent jurist. I have served this community exceedingly well. Which is why I can't believe you'd be willing to walk away from it all. If you're afraid of being stigmatized. Judge Gray, my sexual identity is no secret. You know. I mean, your colleagues on the commission have been around the court system considerably longer than you have. This is not about fear. I don't give a rat's ass what other people think about me. This is about dignity my own sense of dignity. Why should I have to affirm my innocence by trotting out my sexuality? You wouldn't have to. But now people are going to believe that you're guilty of abusing your office. Well, people can believe what they want to believe. But after 30 years, I should not have to defend myself against a spurious attack brought by a prostitute because she's unhappy about a jail sentence. Well, I, I, I wish I could say that I understand your reasoning, but, um, but you're losing everything. Oh, not everything. My identity's not being a judge, not being gay. There are other things to be. This is Atamal. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm the one who attacked my sister. People were talking, and it was a disgrace to my family. I couldn't let that happen. I was very angry with her, and I thought it was what my father would want, what he would expect. <laughs> I thought my father would kill her. So I thought if I just hurt her, that would be enough. She wouldn't have to die. I know you don't understand, but I love, I love my sister. Yasin, you understand that you are going to have to talk to the police. Aisha, Aisha, come home. Yes, ma'am. Aisha comes home now. Hello, Evie. Don't worry, I'm leaving. I'm waiting for my friend to pick me up so I won't be bothering you anymore. When I was a girl, pregnant young women went into group homes. Their babies went into orphanages. This whole creative adoption thing is, is uh, different. Maybe it's even better, I don't know. This baby is terribly important to Peter and Jillian. They're willing to do almost anything to make it work, and some people might take advantage of that. I guess I was just trying to protect them and maybe <clears throat> that's not my place. I'm sorry. But, but this is the way that parents behave. Uh, they do anything to protect their children. That's, that's how I am. And I can guarantee you that's how my son and his wife will be. You really made me feel bad, you know? I mean, why shouldn't they take care of me? I'm doing something special for them. I'm giving them something that they want. It's not like I think they're really my friends. I'm not that stupid. I don't know what to say to you, Evie. This whole thing confuses me. 
I guess maybe if you want your child raised by really good people, you'll stay. If you have other priorities, then maybe you should go. He knew that she was leaving, and he knew that a word, a fragment of a thought, could make her stay. He said nothing. She crossed the street without looking, as if she could not be hurt anymore. The pewter sky was low and thick, clouds tangled in the highest branches of the birch trees, and the world felt hollow. He thought how easy it would be to disappear, how quietly he could go, how few tracks he would leave behind. It's a comedy. Vincent, it's quite something. It's overwritten. No, it's not. It's great. New York Times was impressed. I should tell you something. Did he die at the end? No. Does it sound like he was going to die or something? It's a metaphor. Evie. I didn't ditch all my classes. Hey, come on, sit down. Nice to see you. Here, you can have some of my pie. Like, oh, oh here, 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 have my pie too. Yeah, you're eating no, for two. That's you got plenty. Two. Read another one, Mom. Can, can we move on to something else? Read another one, Mom. No, I, I, I mean it. Read another story, Mom. Can, one more? Mom. That's Lauren. I thought I'd like to read this one again. Come on, Mom. It's good, Vincent. Oh, come on. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. We saw lizards and bats. Cool. Bats are our friends. They don't really suck your blood. Well, it's good to know. I'm going to go show Grandma. Well, thank you so much, Amy. We really loved spending time with her. Oh, well, I'm sure she had a great time, too. Would you like to come in and get something to eat? Oh, no, thank you. Coffee? No, no, no. We have to get back to the city. Thanks. We'd love to do it again, soon. Well, great, great. Maybe I'll come with you. Wouldn't hurt me to have a day off. Well, we, uh, we, we kind of like having our own time with her. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. I know what you mean. Thanks again. Okay, bye-bye. Good to see you, dear. Me too. Karen, Bill, Bill. Uh, I, I, I can't stand this. I really want to tell you my side of things. I mean, you were you were family to me. And I hate the idea of it being so awkward. I I just want you to understand Amy, that. Amy, Amy. Please. It's painful enough as it is. You got what you wanted. Now please just drop it. What I wanted? <laughs> 